Hey, sorry for the stupid nails. I'm out of ideas. Let's close that bathroom door, though, shall we? So I already got a question, and I'm going to answer it here because it's easier for me just to blurt it out than try and type it all up. Um, let me scroll back to the top of it. It's about radiology management, and I'm, uh, of course, I'm, I've got my day off today. I'm working on yard work and running kids around to basketball and volleyball and all that good stuff. So I'm a bit of a mess, so apologize for that, but it is what it is. Um, the question today, or from this particular person, is about uh, radiology administration. Um, let's see. I was mostly wondering about the response, what the responsibilities are, what an average week looks like. Is it a demanding job? Pros and cons. What's a personality trait of yours you believe helped in the role? Um, I'm worried about having to do things I disagree with. I'm not keen on companies or corps because they seldom consider the lowest laborers, blah, blah, blah. Let's, let's start from the top. Um, uh, what are your responsibilities? So I've been a manager and a director and a system level director. Uh, in, in management, it was more, uh, it was closer to the front line. Uh, let me rephrase that. As a, as a manager, the title was actually clinical manager. Um, that was more frontline. It was who the technologists go to with, with their problems. Uh, you know, every hospital has a different structure, but typically you have technologists, then a lead technologist, then a supervisor who's typically on the floor working with the technologists, and then a manager who has an office. Maybe they're on the floor, depending on the facility, and then you have a director, and then you might have a senior director or whatever. Um, I've been a I've been a tech, I've been a lead tech, uh, not a supervisor, but a manager and a director and a system director. And so um, your responsibilities vary for where you're at on, on that on that level, uh, on that schematic. Um, responsibilities at the at the lead level are typically uh, making sure your techs are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Maybe you're the one that uh, uh, back in the day you got a paper requisition and you would hand it off to certain people to make sure it was an even distribution of work being done by everybody and nobody was getting lazy. Maybe you stood at the monitor and QC uh, images as they came in to make sure somebody didn't have one flipped or forgot a marker or whatever. Um, again, different facilities have different responsibilities for these different roles. Um, supervisors, uh, tend to be more about uh, scheduling, uh, problems with equipment, maybe a little bit of budgeting, not much, depends on where you're at. Managers start to get into the budget and they're responsible for uh, expenses, not so much revenue, uh, but expenses. And by expenses, I mean um, the director may ask the manager, how come your hours of overtime were higher than normal uh, this past week or this past month? Um, and the, so the manager is, is modality specific. So you have a manager of x-ray, a manager of MRI, a manager of ultrasound. Uh, and that is typically, you, you may get a manager over multiple, but in the, in the bigger facilities, it's enough on your plate just to be over one. And um, then when you get up to the director level, they're over the whole, the whole department. Um, and so uh, your responsibilities at the director level are, uh, it could be marketing, it could be uh, physician relations, it could be reaching out into the community to get more business, it could be uh, project management, asset management, uh, designing a new CT room, um, visiting, uh, let's say the GE headquarters and look at a new MRI scanner. Um, the, the responsibilities for uh, director are more global. They're over the, the whole imaging department. And then um, let's see, hang on, let me shut the door. Oh, sorry about that. Um, what does an average week look like? Um, you come to work at the uh, prescribed time. Depends on what you have arranged with your facility. Let's say you get to work at 8 in the morning and you work till 5 or 6 p.m. That doesn't mean that's the only time you're responsible for everything because you could get calls before work and after work and usually do. But you, you get to work. 
Um, I used to have, a, I don't have it here with me, but I used to have a note card system. And every time I had, you know, found a new duty that I needed to make sure I was on top of, I'd make a note card for it. And I'd put it in my system based on daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, annual. And so I had a list of, of daily tasks. I would sit down and I'd pull those dailies out and it may be check voicemail, check email, uh, round. It's a lot of rounding where you're going around, check on everybody. Did we have any problems overnight? Um, is the equipment running okay? How's your schedule for today? Uh, is there anything wrong with the scheduling? Uh, so you, you round, and you, you get back to your department, you check for your meetings. You probably have multiple meetings throughout the day with different departments, quality control concerns, um, relations with different departments. You know, radiology is always meeting with the emergency room to see how that relationship's going and so on. So your, your day is basically centered around your, your calendar and your email, and then you should have a set of, of goals or metrics that you're working on. And that kind of makes up what, what your, your day looks like. Um, it's pretty complicated. A lot of different things can go in there, but that's kind of a broad overview just for a quick video. Um, is it a demanding job? Absolutely, because at, at once you get to manager or director, it's all on you. Um, you have to take full responsibility for anything that happens that reports to you. So if as a director, if one of my techs uh, makes a patient angry, um, the first thing I do is talk to the tech and see what their side of it is because there's always two sides to a story and there are patients that are just jerks. Uh, just like in real life, there's always people that are just having a bad day and the first thing they want to do is start yelling at, at anybody. Um, the biggest, one of the biggest problems we had at one of my facilities was patients would come in for multiple exams, meaning they had lab work for blood work and they had radiology for a CT or x-ray or whatever, and they had uh, an EKG and cardiology. And so they're just sitting out in the lobby and they don't even know who they're seeing first. They just know they're waiting a long time and radiology may be the last stop for them. And because it, they sat up there for an hour, it was really because the lab was behind, but they blame everybody. And so we get a bad uh, customer survey or patient survey saying we take too long. And, so a good manager or director will always investigate the allegations and try to take the side of the technologist first. Um, what are the pros and cons? To me, the pro was, you know, as a tech, you can help one patient at a, at a time. But once you get into management and you can, you can affect an entire department, which affects an entire community of patients, you can affect the healthcare being allotted to an entire community. So you can help more people when you get into management. Um, that's how I looked at it. The cons were... Um, it's a lot of responsibility and uh, to kind of jump to your question about um, the corporations and and do they care, um, it's very few and far between that they do. If you check out uh, Z-Dog's latest video where he goes on a rant about how uh, healthcare workers are tired of administrators with MBAs telling us how to do our jobs and telling us how to practice medicine, you'll get a feel for what's going on right now. We've been getting stepped on um, for a decade um, hospitals have turned into a, a profit money making machine, which I get. You got to make money. Even if you're a nonprofit, you're there to make money, but you don't do it at the expense of your employees. You need to take care of your employees or eventually your employees are going to quit. And maybe there was a time when they would say, well, we'll just hire somebody else, but that's not going to work anymore. I can tell you right now in the world of radiology, there are not enough students graduating to replace uh, or to even keep up with the pace of what's coming from the retiring baby boomer generation. Um, they, we're going to need a lot more uh, uh, rad techs than what's being pumped out by the schools. And uh, so, um, let's see, you said uh, pros and cons. I mean, if you like radiology, then it's a pro just working. And I, I love radiology. I love the modalities that I've, that I've learned. Um, I like the technology. Um, I like uh, solving problems. Um, when I first started college a long time ago, I was going to be an accountant because I liked looking at ledgers and figuring out where that missing penny was. That, that was a problem solving technique to me. Uh, but after a, a tax accounting class where I learned all this stuff and then they said, okay, new year, new tax rules. You got to learn new, new laws. I'm like, wait a minute, you're changing it every year. I'm, I'm out of here. Uh, little did I know a uh, healthcare, uh, CMS and, and blue cross and everybody else was going to change what they reimburse for. And, and all that kind of stuff every year anyway. 
Um, I see a question from Blissful Vibes. I'm going to try and finish uh, the one I'm working on here, and then I'll jump over to yours. Um, what personality trait of yours do you believe helped you in this role? I'll tell you what didn't help is I take things personally. If my department doesn't do well, I take it personally. Um, and if my boss jumps down my throat, I take it personally. Uh, you, you need to learn how to take your job seriously. Um, you know, I, I, I rely, I had a mentor. I still kind of have a mentor who I've, I've never met, but I've listened to a lot of his seminars. His name is Jim Rohn, R-O-H-N. And one of the things he says is you don't get paid for the hours that you work. You get paid for the value that you bring to your job. So I always took my job very seriously and, and put everything I, I could into it. In fact, and, and this is a, a warning for anybody watching, uh, family always comes first. Don't ever sacrifice your job for your family. I was in some uh, really big negotiations one Christmas, uh, one Christmas time in December, and I had spent probably six months uh, traveling around with my doctors and my my supervisors, and we were evaluating uh, new equipment. I was built, I built, and drafted a new outpatient imaging center, and it had an X-ray room, a CT scanner, a 3T MRI two IR labs, uh, two ultrasound rooms, and a pre-post uh, nursing bay of six beds. And so I traveled around with my team, and we looked at all this equipment and had scorecards and put all this work into what we wanted. And um, we got towards the end where we had the vendors coming in to negotiate prices. This was kind of the part where you determine who's going to get the contract. And we had three teams. You had Phillips GE and Siemens. And we'd have them sit out in the cafeteria and we'd call them in one at a time and we'd say, OK, what's your best offer for pricing to us? And they'd, they'd tell us, you know, this much money, one year warranty on everything, blah, blah, blah. And we go, OK, great. Now, uh, if you don't mind going back out, we're going to have the next group come in and the next group come in. They tell us and then we start over and go, OK, here's what we were told. But here's what we want. Maybe we want two years warranty. Maybe we want instead of four million is three million or whatever. And we were working on those negotiations, and I got a call from my wife saying my uh, oldest daughter, who was about 19 at the time, was in a car wreck. And I said, is she okay? And she said, yeah, I think so. Um, I just wanted you to know and see if you wanted to meet me there. And I said, well, you know, I'm right in the middle of these really important negotiations. If you think she's okay, you go ahead and go there. Call me if you need anything. And she said, okay, I'll take care of it. And I continued on those negotiations. And I'll jump to the end and tell you that my administrator, at the end of all that negotiations, just a few weeks later, overrode my suggestions on what to buy. Her decisions made absolutely no sense at all. She chose one vendor for everything, which is a horrible mistake. And not only overrode me, but said that I had to agree and go sell it to my team which uh, I argued for 30 minutes that that was ridiculous and I, I would never do that. And she basically said, you're not leaving my office until you agree. And so I said, fine, I'm leaving. Uh, but I'm not going back to my department. I'm taking the rest of the day off because I'm not walking through and looking at my team with that in my mind. And, and she looked at me and said, I, I think you should go home because you're red from the neck up. Um, and I'll never forget that lesson. That taught me that some bosses just don't give a crap about how much time and effort you put into what you do for your job. They don't listen to reason. Um, you know, they hire you because you're the expert, but yet they blow off everything you tell them. And I, sh I should have just gone and, and checked out my daughter and made sure she was okay and not been all for the company who didn't even care what I was putting into all this stuff. So that gives you an idea of what corporations can do and how little they really care about it's middle management we're talking about here. You mentioned, uh, you know, about the front line and, and uh, they seldom consider the lowest laborers. Um, administration doesn't touch the text. They shouldn't be touching text. And by administration, I mean above the director. They should not be getting involved. If your senior director or VP is coming in and, and talking to your technologists and firing them or, or and somehow getting involved in them, you should have a problem with that because that's your job and your domain. And that's your business to take care of, not theirs. Um, so my point in that is they typically don't, you don't see if the tech loses their job, it's from their manager or their director. So you don't have to worry about the front lines getting wiped out. 
um, because you, you can't run a hospital without the tax. You can run it without a director. You can run it without a manager. Um, you can fire a manager and tell a lead tech, you're going to do those duties until we find somebody else. And you're not going to get any extra pay for it. And if that tech doesn't like it, they may lose their job. So they have to do it. So that's a lot of what Z Dog was ranting about is we're tired of getting stepped on by administrators who, who my administrator that pulled this garbage I was telling you about didn't even have any um, didn't even have any real background in radiology. And then when I got promoted to the system level, my new boss at the system level uh, wasn't even a nurse or anything. She was uh, like an MBA type who had ran a physician group somewhere in a practice, and here I am. Uh, supposedly oversight of an entire hospital system radiology department reporting to somebody who doesn't even know what I'm talking about. So be very careful uh, about moving into management. Make sure you really like it. That's the first thing uh, uh, my first boss said to me when I moved into management. He said, are you sure you want to move into management and get off the floor? And of course, I didn't know what he was talking about because I'd never been a manager. And um, I said, sure, you know, I, I want to I want an eight to five job with uh, no call. And I'm looking at the through the rose colored glasses. Um, but that's not how it works. You uh, in fact, some even have to still do exams. Um, I had a manager in, in one position who was still doing ultrasounds because there wasn't enough sonographers. And my boss wouldn't let us hire any more techs. They put a freeze on everything. But yet the patients are still coming in the door somebody's got to scan them and this manager's not even getting paid for doing scans. And that's another thing you got to watch out for because that's happening more and more often. It's called a working manager. Supervisors typically are on the floor. Managers should not be on the floor. Managers should be taking care of, of the reporting and the budgets and the projects and things like that. So, um, I, you know, I'm probably ranting a little bit, but I've been in it long enough that I've seen the downside of some of these roles um, I've, I know the downside of being a tech and that's you're asked to do more and more and more for, for no extra pay. And I've seen the side of, of administration where you have all these things, you know, need to happen and administration won't back you up on them because they're trying to save every penny yet. They'll let a surgeon buy an O arm for a million bucks and not even tell the radiology department, mind you, it takes two techs to run an O arm, but I found out the day it was delivered. You know, go figure. You'd think they would have uh, consulted me and asked about that. Um, let's see. So this person happened to be, so they're a phlebotomist, which I don't know if I, I've mentioned it in other videos, but I was a phlebotomist for about 10 years because I, I like being a phlebotomist. I like drawing blood. Um, it was technical. It was healthcare related. I found it kind of fascinating. It was a challenge. Um, but one day I finally realized no one was ever really happy to see me, if that makes sense. You know, I'd walk into patients' rooms for a morning draw at 5 a.m. or 3 a.m. or whatever. And, of course, I had to wake them up, and that wasn't pleasant. And then I'm sticking a needle in their arm, and that's not pleasant. And they would say things like, I hope you're good at what you do. And I wanted to say, well, if I'm not, I'm not going to tell you. So, you know, I, I finally just said, I'm, I'm going to do something else, maybe that makes more money, um, that has more opportunities. And, and radiology has a tremendous amount of opportunities. Um, let's see, I have a, uh, question here from Blissful Vibes. I am a BSR, so I hope that answered your question prior. I didn't want to mention you by name. Um, I'm a BSRS student who hopes to get an MRI certificate. I've also been leaning towards cardiac cath lab. What are the pros and cons? So MRI is a fantastic modality. There's never enough MRI techs out there. Um, they can make a lot of money. They're very well paid. Um, I find MRI techs to be very strong character, very strong in character. They know what needs to get done, and they don't put up with any crap. And by that, I mean um, they stand their ground. If you haven't gone through the proper training, they do not let you into zone three, uh, which is where the control room is in, in most departments. Um, there's four zones getting in the MRI. Zone one is usually just the main hallway. Zone two may be kind of a changing room or something like that. Zone three is the desk where the tech sits, and zone four is the magnet room. Nobody gets into zone four except the patient after the techs have done all their checklists and make sure that they're safe. And nobody gets into zone three if the techs are doing their job, uh, unless the tech says so. Um, so MRI, uh, you see less patients per day than, say, x-ray, because MRI, I mean, uh, 
you know, there, there are scanners out there that can do a brain in five minutes, but you're not really doing those very often. I mean, maybe some facilities are doing quick five minute MRI brains for stroke or something. I don't know. But a typical brain is 30, 30 minutes, maybe up to 45. Um, but, a, you know, your average scans 45 minutes to an hour. Some of them can go a couple hours if you're doing a CTL or something. Um, so you're not seeing, you know, like x-ray, you could see 40, 50 patients a day if you're at a busy ortho clinic. So MRI, I would say, is a bit more slower. And, and not that it's not stressful or a hard job, because it is. Uh, but it's not hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Um, well, I probably feel like it is, because... That's usually what management is telling them to see more patients, see more patients. Um, but uh, I, I advise all of you technologists and students, you take control of your area and you dictate the patient care and you let your management know, I need this set amount of time to properly take care of my patient. Don't let them push you until you make a mistake because you're going too fast because that is on you as the tech. You take control of that. And most MRI techs are good at that. They'll say, look, I understand that uh, you want me to do 17 scans a day, but I'm only comfortable with 12 and I'll do what I can and I'll fill cancellations with people on a wait list or, you know, I'll stay an hour or two late to get an extra scan in for you, but, but you don't cut corners to get more scans done. So MRI is very lucrative. Uh, it's on the job training. There are some things online you can do. There's some schools you can go to, but that's really not required. Um, you get certified through the ARRT, um, and then you asked about the oh, and there's and there's call. You know, typically MRI, unless you're at a really big place, um, isn't overnight. It can be, um, and the ER can certainly take advantage of that. But for the most part, it's a, a daytime uh, modality. Outpatient clinics, you, you know, you don't see a 24-hour outpatient clinic do an MRI. Um, and cath lab. So the cath lab is a, a fast paced, fun place to work. Um, being a cath lab tech and stinting, uh, assisting the cardiologist and the nurses um, is a very rewarding job. You're, you're literally saving people's lives right there on the table, but you're also losing some lives on the table and you have to be prepared for that. You have to be able to deal with death, um, but that's you know usually not the case. It, and that can happen in x-ray, that can happen in uh, CT, certainly. Um, cath lab is good pay, very good pay, high pay. Um, lots of call. Um, I mentioned this in a video earlier about cath lab. It's usually a couple of teams that rotate through a cath lab department because cath lab services, for the most part, have to be ready to go 24-7. So team A may be working 8 to 5 on Monday, but team B is on call at that same time because if you have two cath lab tables or suites and another one comes in when team A is already working, then team B has to come in and both teams are working. And that happens a lot. And you may even have a team C that's on call uh, for that night shift to give these two a break so they're not working continuously throughout the week. Um, but um, I've seen high burnout rates in the cath lab. I've seen it burn people out in six months to a year where they're like, yeah, I'm making tons of money and I'm getting called in all the time. And after about a year, they're going, screw this. <laughs> but but if you're if you're type A and you like fast pace and you you like that money and you like what you're doing, I mean I know people that have been doing IR for years and years and years. So it's all about your type of personality, what you like. Um, the cath lab tech is right there at the table, uh, doing things right there with the first assist or the cardiologist. That you know is typically a cardiologist and a first assist uh, and a tech and a nurse on the other side running all the IV bags and everything. Maybe somebody fetching uh, supplies and tools and stuff. Um, but it's not typically under radiology. It's typically outside of radiology under the cardiology department. So if you're an x-ray tech and you want to do cath lab, it's kind of hard to do both, really. You kind of have to go to one or the other because it'll be a full-time deal for both. Um, I had a very good, very skilled uh, x-ray tech on my night shift who wanted to get off the night shift and make more money and usually you can't do that usually the night shift makes more money than the day shift so in order to make more money she'd have to go to another higher modality like ct mri ultrasound something like that but she didn't have any additional training that i can remember she may have been ct trained i can't remember um, but a day shift spot opened in the cath lab which meant she got to go to days and she got more money so i lost her to the cath lab department but she was it was a brilliant move for her 
Um, she's doing very well, very happy, and uh, Cath Lab has a lot of great opportunities. So um, that's also on the job training. I, I don't know of any Cath Lab type facilities or schools that you go to, but you can. I mean, um, it probably, you know, I, I couldn't give you a timeline on how long it takes. I know in the IR, some of my hospitals have taken two years to completely train somebody in interventional, which is very similar to uh, the cath lab. Um, but, you know, I would probably guess, uh, I'd say it's six months to a year, uh, I would think would be a proper training for a cath lab tech because it's, you know, it's not exactly see one, do one, teach one. Yeah, like x-ray, you know, usually is. This is more like you you watch for a while and you do it under somebody's supervision for a while. Um, so, oh, and you're welcome for those positioning quizzes on the website. I tell you, it, it takes takes a while to build those quizzes, uh, but I know they're helpful. And so I'm happy to put them out there. If you have any requests for a particular subject, um, I've just got oodles of this stuff that I've been sitting on in my garage for years. Uh, I mean, technology changes for sure, but a lot of this stuff doesn't. You know, how you do a hand x-ray doesn't change. So the positioning, the physics, uh, the sectional, cross-sectional anatomy, a lot of that stuff doesn't change. So um, if you have anything else you're looking for to help you study, I, I really I really got it in the deals for these guys from the class of 2020 because they really got shafted. Uh, getting pulled out of clinicals, told to figure it out on your own and that kind of stuff. That's when I posted, um, I don't have Mr. Bones in here. One of my kids kidnapped him, but it, there's a full-size skeleton. I've got links to it on my website, the radiologic technologist.com. Uh, that full-size skeleton is completely adjustable and it stays in whatever position you set it. So you can use it uh, on a table or kitchen table, whatever, and position it for your different um, exams to practice. You know, make your own positioning pads to, to put a like an oblique L-spine or something. Uh, use a flashlight and maybe just put two pieces of tape, really skinny, like an X, to, to simulate your beam and, and go over your positions. Uh, but I, I feel bad for that 2020 class and, and maybe 2021, the way we're headed, because uh, th this stuff's hands-on. You can sit in a classroom and learn the classroom part of this stuff, all day long, but what you really need to know is the stuff you learn on your clinicals. And so um, I hope that answers your stuff about uh, MRI and, and uh, cath lab. Let's see. All right. You're welcome, Blissful Vibes. Let's see. Here's another one. Um, I suppose I ask about corporations stepping on lower laborers because I wonder if you have to do it as well. Yes, absolutely you do. Um, I had a senior administrator that would tell me, uh, and this is where you have to decide what kind of person you are. Um, I started out as a yes man because I had a family of eight to take care of and I uh, wanted to keep my job and I thought, you know, I have to do everything I'm told to do. And I finally learned over the years, um, if, if that's all you want, get somebody else because I'm not going to be, I'm a tech. I'm a tech that's behind the boss's desk. And so if you want this department to run well, you're going to listen to me. If you're going to tell me how to run it and I think your idea sucks, then you just need to find somebody else. Um, so, yeah, they will come to you. I had uh, for four years, I had a senior administrator that was really good at uh, determining what metrics are important. And she would come to me and say, here's the goal I want you to meet. And I would take that challenge and say, OK, I will we'll hit that goal and I'll figure out how to do it. And you'll be happy with my um, my my outcomes. And uh, but the problem with that, it's kind of like as you learn more modalities, they just expect you to do it all without much more pay. The same thing goes with these metrics. The more you meet those metrics, the more they just pile it on. And I mean, you can only squeeze so much blood from a stone, right? Which is none really. But I would hit these metrics and then they go, OK, you saved us, you know, a million bucks. So now save us a million and a half. And it's like, dude, I've already, you know, expanded hours and and cut down staffing a little bit and, you know, added another modality. And I, what I never really saw, at least at the facilities I have been at, um, and I'm one of those idiots that stays loyal for many years before I finally leave. Uh, so I, I stay there for a while. My, my first hospital, I probably was there seven, eight, nine years. Um, 
but they, they're just never, they never stop and celebrate. In fact, they start taking away like Rat Tech Week. Can't celebrate Rat Tech Week. Uh, why not? Uh, if you're not going to let us officially celebrate it, then we're just going to celebrate it on our own. But then they stopped that. They came to me a couple of years ago. Administration said, you can't celebrate Red Tech Week because Environmental Services doesn't have Environmental Services Week. And that's not fair. Really? Then tell them to do their own. Why can I not celebrate my profession because some other profession doesn't celebrate their own? Um, you guys really just got to start standing your ground. I am appalled. Every time I get in these Facebook groups and we talk about Rad Tech Week, because I've always had a Rad Tech Week everywhere I have worked for the last 10 years, there's been a Rad Tech Week. I could show you a closet full of T-shirts. I make a shirt every year. Some years I did a commemorative coin. You watch. There's a, there's a Nurses Week. There's a Physicians Week. There's an Administrative Secretaries Week that gets celebrated in one way or the other. Don't tell me I can't celebrate Rad Tech Week. Um, sorry, a little, little rant there. Uh, let's see. Uh, I got a one here. Enjoy your content. Thanks for sharing. I'm going into mammography with all of your experience in the field and radiology overall. Um, so mammo is probably one of my weaker subjects, but I did have mammography under my wing. Um, it is seems to me to be highly sought after by female techs. Um, when I when I I'll just say raise X-ray techs. When I groom X-ray techs, whatever you want to call it. Um, they either want to go to CT, ultrasound, or MAMO, it seems. Some of them go to MRI. Don't, I don't hardly ever get any going to Nuke Med. Um, but MAMO, you can cross-train in. Um, MAMO techs are very serious about their jobs. Not that other techs aren't, but it's kind of like MRI. MRI techs are hardcore. They you know, don't even think about coming in my area unless you've crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's, and I know who you are, and you've done all the paperwork. MAMO is that way with quality. MAMO cares very much. I mean, they know what they're there for. They're there to make sure that if there's cancer, that it can be found. And of course, it can't always be found, but MAMO techs are very serious and sincere about their job. Um, as far as pay goes, I wish it was better. Uh, typically, it's a couple more dollars an hour than an x-ray tech, which isn't great. Um, but, you know, I had MAMO techs making 35 bucks an hour because they'd been there 20 years, so... It's about, you know, part of that, too, is is uh, redundancy. Do you like taking an extra of the exact same thing 20 times a day or whatever, over and over and over? Um, and it always hurts, no matter how you do it. Um, and you, you're going to get patient complaints from time to time that, you know, that tech was too harsh and it hurt. And, and some places are moving to this protocol where they give the patient the trigger and let them compress on their own. And studies are actually showing that patients will compress themselves harder than a tech will uh, because they're in control of it. So um, I would not discourage anybody from going to mammography. I think it's a great field. Uh, it, it, it pays well enough. It gives high satisfaction for the tech. Um, you don't see a lot of cuts in mammography. In fact, now you've got 3D Tomo out there that's uh, cutting down the amount of callbacks, which is great. Patients don't get that call. You know, you, you do a 2D mammo, and the, if you got a dense breast, uh, sometimes we're out of go, eh, I can't tell. Bring them back, do another one, or bring them back for an ultrasound. Then the tech's got to call that patient, go, eh, we're not sure if you have cancer or not. So you got to come back in. Well, that's stressful. Um, and of course, you say that as good as you can, but it's still. A return call because we're not sure which is stressful 3d breast tomo is eliminating a good portion of that not all of it but a good portion of it um and it's definitely i mean it's mandatory everybody's going to it now um so when you see a modality start to advance in technology like that that's a good sign for longevity um ct is always doing that uh mri um pet scanning uh, put new life into nuclear medicine. Um, IR is evolving. That type of technology is evolving. And, and so is MAMO. So if you're interested in MAMO, um, but you're going to kind of have to fight for that because you're probably going to have a lot of people that you work with that want the same thing. So if you can just kind of politely say, hey, can I kind of start uh, hanging out with you guys? Can I uh, learn on the side? But you got to be careful, too, because a lot of facilities will say, if you're not on the clock, you can't be learning. 
or uh, you, if you, you know, people say, well, I'll come on my days off and learn. You can't do that because you can't be exposed to patient information when you're not on the clock being paid as an employee. So there's really no more training off the clock. You have to be training on the clock. Um, and, you know, like one place I, I had a women's center with uh, two machines and it was Monday through Friday, eight to five. Um, and geez, I probably had seven techs, uh, and four x-ray techs that are interested in, in cross training. So, you know, you're probably going to be in a competitive market. Depends on where you're at though. Um, that's my take on mammography for, uh, for, uh, Noe. Did I say that right? Noe. And so I think we're getting there. Um, Yep, I don't see any more new questions. If you have anything else, uh, we've already gone 35 minutes, so that's great. Uh, if you have any more questions, post them in the comment section below. Um, oh, yeah, I've read many of your articles on your website. Is there any tricks on getting better grades? Pre-rec courses, I was an A student, and now I'm a high C student, low B student. Well, the first thing that pops into my mind is you can repeat a class and take the new grade. So if you get a C in a class, just repeat it and get an A, and that knocks off the C. Um, but uh, I have an article about how to study because there are different methods out there on study techniques, and I found some really good ones that helped me out a lot. I put those. I'll see if I can link to that in the comments section, but it, I think it's in the article, How to Study for Your Boards. Um, there's, you know, there's the methodology of, of taking a break every 25 minutes so you, so you stay fresh. Uh, there's putting your topics in different uh, card piles and going through them. And as you learn them, you put it at the end. And if you don't get something correct, it goes to the beginning and you slowly start to separate what you know for sure from what you're not so sure about. And then you can focus more of your attention on what you're not so sure about. Um, but check out that article on how to study. Um, and I'm a huge proponent for group study. Um, you, you can wrote, memorize uh, easily on your own. That's mostly what I did. Um, when, like when I studied from my x-ray boards, I went to the local college, got one of their little study rooms that was uh, like a glass cubicle with a table and five chairs and a big eraser board. And I took my laptop and I had the Appleton Lang study guide, which had a thousand questions on a CD. And I just broke them up into, into sets of 100 and then in a sets of 10 from there, and I just hammered on them eight to five, Monday through Friday for a week, just me in the room. I'd bring some water and some beef jerky and some peanuts, and I would just stay in there and keep memorizing and memorizing and memorizing until I had the whole thing as best I could. Uh, and then I went and took the boards. I think I got like a 78. So, you know, not rocket science, but it passed. Uh, and never once have I ever been interviewed or interviewing a tech and said what you score on your art boards nobody cares all they care about is that you have the search so don't worry about what your score is just worry about passing um, and i can tell you the x-ray boards are a lot easier to pass than the ultrasound boards don't get me started on that one um but see if you can repeat the i mean if you have time i get that maybe you don't have time to repeat your your classes. I know I was in a big hurry to get in and get it over with. Um, but, you know, getting into x-ray school isn't necessarily about the grades either. I mean, yeah, it helps if you have great grades, uh, but I, I don't recall having great grades. I, my motto all through college was C's get degrees. I was at Arizona State. It was a huge party school. I was a Sigma Chi. Uh, in fact, there's like two years I can barely even remember in there when I was pledging and whatnot. So, um, the interview, which I have articles about, the interview has a lot to do with whether or not you get in. Uh, and it's not always about your grade. So check out some of those articles about how to do your interview to get in. Because there's a lot of tips and tricks in there, too. Um, our school just added the grade to the GPA, no knockoffs on the RAD classes. Um, grade to the GPA. Interesting. Um, so I've got messages coming from multiple places now. Um, yeah, definitely. I know it's kind of a, a groaner, as they said on Ready Player One. 
uh, to go through my site map on my website. But I'm telling you, there's like 90 articles there that answer a whole bunch of common questions um, because the same questions you you have the text two years, five years, 10 years ahead of you had the same question, same questions I had when I was applying. So go through the website and look at those articles. And if I don't address one of your questions, hit me and I'll do a video. I'll probably post an article later about it um, because I'm telling you, our profession is in for a world of hurt in the next 10 years because we don't have enough text. We don't have enough text right now. And the schools aren't pumping out enough because they are restricted from how many people they can allow in the program. My local one here uh, graduates 12 and I had a talk with him five years ago and said, is there any way to get 15? Um, and he said, look, I, I can only have as many as the state allows because I have to be able to prove that there are jobs out there for these people when they graduate. And even though I can help him prove I need five a year or something like that, um, it takes years for him to get that approved through the state, which then, you know, takes time to get back and expand the class. Uh, and I know I said he takes 12 and I only need five, but over half of his class would go somewhere else uh, immediately upon graduating out of state, back where they came from. Um, even though they all rotated through my department, I would say best I can remember on average, we would only take two or three or get two or three because there's some you don't want. Don't get me wrong. Uh, you guys have to remember on your clinicals, that's a job interview. Every single clinical is a job interview and you have to be doing your best. Even if you don't want to work there, you'd be surprised. You'll see when you graduate and as the years go by, radiology is a small world and you will run into people years from now that knew about you or heard about you or you may say, yeah, I used to work at Banner 10 years ago and they'll go, Oh, were you there when such and such worked there? What a jerk that guy was. Um, it's a small community. I still see um, and talk to people that I went to school with uh, in 2003 that uh, I see one of my old um, supervisors from my first job at the national conference almost every year. I see my first director at that same conference every year. Um, so it's a small world. So you've got to do the best you can do. If you have a problem at your clinicals, you need to go to your clinical instructor. Well, so your clinical instructor works for the hospital. Your teacher, you need to have full confidence in your teacher that you can take your problems about your clinicals to your teacher and get resolution. And that teacher should be backing you up. My local guy here is really good about that. Um, he takes the side of those students and he will go to that hospital and say, I don't know what you're thinking, but uh, you can't have my student holding patients without lead on or whatever the issue is. Um, and it has to get addressed because uh, you these... Hospitals cannot lose clinical uh, students. They have to have them. Um, well, there are some that will argue that they don't have to have them, but it's a cycle. Uh, facilities that don't have students, that don't allow students, are losing out in a lot of ways. Um, I got another question. How long is MRI training? Uh, for me personally, at my facility, it was six months. Um, it starts out... Uh, on the day shift with the lead tech or the supervisor, if it's a working supervisor and they work for a good two to three months learning the proper way to do the exams from the leader. And if you're running a good department, everybody's on the same page. But that being said, just like an x-ray, you may go shoot a chest and shoot at 95 at five and somebody else says, no, it's, it's a hundred at three. And everybody has their own techniques, same way in MRI, same way in ultrasound. Everybody has their own little minute tweak that they do. Uh, your job as a student is to learn what everybody does and then come up with your own technique as long as it's proper in the end, proper outcome. Um, so MRI, I'd say two to three months with the boss in the department, and then you should be rotated through different shifts and with different techs because uh, let's say your afternoon guy uh, does a majority of, I don't know, joints or something because that's what he's, you know, he's the 3T magnet joint guy or something. You need to get exposure to any little nuances that the different techs do or that the different shifts may do. Um, so three months to kind of, you know, two to three months to learn the, the, the real deal. Get passed around the department to learn whatever anybody else might know. Like maybe your second shift guy is the guy that's been doing it for 30 years and he knows how, he knows the standard protocol but then he knows how to get in and change the parameters to shave two minutes off of a head or something. 
Um, so you need to kind of learn from everybody. And then at the end, you culminate that into however you, you want to do it. So I'd say six months is, is average for MRI. Um, if you're lucky, uh, and I've seen this before, when, when you get accepted into that training position, you start getting paid as an MRI tech day one. I didn't do it that way. Um, if you were an x-ray tech and, and so what I would do is I would post the position. There's a, a cross training opportunity in MRI. Somebody's retiring. I need somebody else in there who's interested. And then I'd get five people who would apply and then we would interview them. And we had a scorecard for interviewing. Uh, there was points for seniority. So if, if I had two people that were, um, skilled similarly and answered the questions similarly, and you know, it was hard to kind of pick, but one guy's been there. 20 years, one guy's been there five, I gave points for seniority. Not everybody agrees with that, but I, I think that also creates loyalty and, and happiness with the employees to know that, hey, if I stick around, I'm going to get some some benefits out of this. So uh, you interview, you do your scorecards, you ask all the questions, then whoever gets it, um, then you got to figure out how to backfill them, right, from wherever they're coming from, because you can't leave your team high and dry over an x-ray. And you put them in, in MRI and they get x-ray pay, uh, and they don't get MRI paid till they pass the boards. So I, I think you should plan on that. If you're going to go into MRI and learn it, don't plan on getting MRI pay until you pass the boards. Some places will uh, start paying you from day one, and that's awesome. If you can get that, go for it. I'm not saying that's necessarily bad, but I'm not going to pay somebody the modality-specific pay until they can do that modality on their own uh, 100%, or at least 95%, and, and start taking call maybe, even throw that in there. Um, that's how long MRI training is. Um, got another one, uh, our school. Oh no. Okay. So I think we're caught up. So thanks again for watching. If it's been helpful, hit the like button, please. And subscribe. Uh, that helps, uh, tells YouTube that people are interested in this channel and then they'll put this video in the sidebar when people are asking questions in the overall search bar about radiology, they'll see this video and it'll start getting people the, the proper answers to their questions. I, I can't tell you how frustrated I get looking at some of these websites on the internet where they're calling us technicians and they clearly don't have a clue what we do. Uh, it's just a website trying to get you to click on their stuff and they probably get paid some kind of fee if you go sign up for a school through their website or something. There's, you know, for every good radiology website, there's 20 crappy ones that don't even know what we do. So please like and subscribe. Let's get this channel out there so that people who are interested in our field or students that are uh, in school right now can get good, honest answers, get their questions answered. Um, I interview other people in the field. I've interviewed an x-ray tech that does mobile x-ray in Hollywood. And for an hour, she told us all the crazy stories about what she does with, with Hollywood with HIPAA in mind. Um, fascinating job over there. Uh, she actually gets tipped. Uh, crazy story. You have to see that one. Um, I've interviewed the head physicist with the AAPM who is uh, behind that whole stop shielding your patients movement, which is, you know, can really get uh, radiographers in an uproar and teachers in an uproar. Um, but there's some science behind it. You really owe it to yourself as a student or as a tech to go read the research papers. Um, that's a whole other video. So uh, like and subscribe. And if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks for stopping by. We'll catch you later. I'm gonna go back and do some chores. I've got to, what is it over? I gotta, I gotta clean the bathroom. <laughs> See you guys.